Hello, this is the next video in a series I'm calling Transformations of Random Variables. And we're going to do an example with an orthogonal transformation of normal random variables. In the previous video, we defined what a linear transformation was and then a specific kind of linear trans uh, transformation called an orthogonal transformation. And so um, here we're going to let the x's be uh, independent normal random variables with different means same variance and we're going to let this orthogonal transformation be C the the matrix uh, K the K by K matrix times our random vector and we get a random vector back and so and so this uh, uh, scalar notation it's this this represents each element of this vector where you take the ith row times this vector and you get the ith element of this vector. And so you can, this is the same as this. And it's going to be an orthogonal transformation. That tells us the properties of C. We want to find the distribution of Y and show that the Y are independent. Okay. First of all, um, the X's, um, the joint distribution can be written like this in vector form or you know each component from 1 to k yep and uh, they're independent so it's the product of these and they're all normal uh, distributions so it's the product of the constants and the product of these which means you add up these uh, exponents and you get this here um, now using a vector notation it can be written as this where x is, x is a random vector y uh, mu is a vector and then you transpose it and then this uh, dotted with this or this times this you get this piece back um, we're going to solve this in vector notation and in scalar notation so they are vectors so now Let's look at this transformation. Here we, this is the original, and uh, it's orthogonal, which means this, the determinant's not zero. Um, and so we could take the inverse, pre-multiplied pre by C inverse to both sides. And that's what we do here to solve for X. And since uh, C is orthogonal, we showed that the inverse, C inverse, is really just the transpose of C. So this is the vector notation and scalar notation. We can write it like this, where we switch the J and the I because it's the transpose. So this uh, row times this is represented by this. And the Jacobian of this transformation is it's one over the, the absolute value of the determinant of C. And this was, we showed this in the previous video, linear transformations. And since it's orthogonal, the determinant is one. So that's why we get one here. Now let's plug in our information. So the dens density of Y can be thought of as plugging what we back solved for X. So plugging this into the density for X and then times the absolute value of the Jacobian. And so this distribution we said was this. So we're going to plug in this piece where the X's are. And that's what we do over here. Now we, we want to uh, multiply. Well, actually, yeah. So we distribute the, uh, um, the transpose and then multiply them and we get this. You know, so this times this is, is this one. And then this times that is, is this. And then this times that is that. And that times that is this. Okay. So now this here, these are one by one. So this is a, a number. And so, and this is a number. One dimension. Um... by one and so um, we can transpose it and it's still one by one it's the same number 
but we transpose it because then these two numbers are the same and we can combine them. And so that's what we do in this step is we combine those into this and then this is uh, can be factored into this and and now we're actually finished this is a normal multivariate normal distribution so the y's are multivariate normal and the variance covariance matrix usually goes here so it's the identity matrix so all the off diagonals are zero which says the y's are independent so the y's are independent and it's multivariate normal we're finished but now let's do it with scalar uh, notation which to me is much much more cumbersome but let's do it so here we want to find the density of y so we plug in what we back solve for here which are these and I'm going to flash that a second here so each of these so when we back solve for x and this is the scalar notation so if we put in a 1 here we want to do the first component we put an I there and we sum over the J's. And that's what we're doing here. We put in a one in the first component, you know, X one and then that two and three and then X K. And we take it times the absolute values of Jacobian, which is one. These are independent. So it's the product of those individual, um, you know, these, the, the densities. Which, is, which then we get this. So these is just a product and we add all this together. Now let's start multiplying. So this is a squared term. So let's square it and we get this. Uh, we combine these because we get two of them. Um, now um, we want to distribute this, this index i to each of those. And so that's what we do here. But then um, we are going to notice something here. This right here, since it's an orthogonal transformation, this, this sum right here, the product and the sum, is either 0 or 1. And it depends upon whether j equals l or j is not equal to l. If they're not equal, this is 0 and it drops out. And if they're equal, this is 1. So it's 1 times this we get this. So this piece right here actually I'm going to cover up combines to the squared piece. Okay. And then uh, we'll bring this piece down but this one we're going to do something very interesting. We're going to uh, multiply it times one in a very unique way. And it's sort of the opposite of what we did here where we this becomes 1 if they're equal and uh, 0 if they're not equal. So we can add 0 to this sum and multiply by 1 and that's what we do here. So it's, it's just the opposite of what we did here. You know, So if we were to go from here to here it would be obvious but here to here it's not as obvious but it, they're, they're the same. And, and this relationship going back and forth was uh, highlighted in the previous video called linear transformations and so now once we have this um, and we have two of those one of these two so we can uh, factor this it's a perfect square into this and um, then Oh yeah, and so this is and so this is the the you know product of k of these, and this is a sum. So if we look at we you know we kind of split the e's out and we split this out, you can think of it as the product from one to k. J equals one to k of these. And so if we are take this product, we do get this back. And so I write it like this because it's the the product of the individual densities, and then. Um, so that says that the product of these individual densities do, 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 equals the joint distribution, so they're all independent. Um, and this is a normal distribution. Each one of these is a little normal distribution, and when you product them, you get this back, which is again a normal random variable. And the distribution is yj is equal to the sum of uh, ji mu i and then variance sigma squared. 
Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Uh, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.